Hi, welcome back. Today we are going to be talking about lengths and perimeter. I hope you're all having a good day. I know that I am. Of course, uh, any day we get to do math is always a good day in my book. In this lesson, we are going to worry about missing lengths um, horizontally and vertically, and then we will talk about perimeter, and then we'll put them all together and worry about missing lengths in two dimensions on the same diagram and uh, the perimeter of uh, figures that have some missing lengths. So before we really delve down into the nitty-gritty here, let's look at a figure. So we have a line segment of length D, and it's split up into two smaller parts. It's pretty easy to see that the small parts B and C come together to make the whole, which is D. So we can write that B plus C is equal to D. This is my favorite way to talk about two parts coming together to make a whole, but we could do it differently. We could look at the whole first and imagine what would happen if we took away one of the parts. For example, if we took away the part of size C, we would be left with a segment of length B. Of course, we can go the other direction as well. We can start with the whole. We can take away the side of length B and be left with a segment of length C. And any one of these three will work to represent this situation. I just like problem number one, or I guess version number one. So let's see, let's try an example here. We have a refrigerator, 25 inches deep. The front of the refrigerator is 27.25 inches away from the wall. We'd like to know the clearance between the refrigerator and the wall. And I know a lot of you have already looked at this and instantaneously decided that the clearance was 2.25 inches. I know that you can probably do this in your head. Um, that's really not the point today though. Our job is to get um, a handle on drawing these diagrams and figuring out the process for solving these problems for when we can't do it in our heads. So the first thing we want to do is get the diagram. We have the refrigerator 25 inches deep. We don't have to draw a refrigerator. We just really need to see that there's 25 inches between the front and the back of the refrigerator. The front of the refrigerator is 27.25 inches away from the wall. So we've divided this 27.25 inches up into two pieces. There's the refrigerator and then there's the clearance that we don't know. It's always a good idea to come off to the side and define what your variables are representing. So in this case, our x is talking about the amount of clearance. Later on, of course, our problems will get a little more complicated and it's always good to have good habits firmly ingrained before we get to the point where we really need them and then don't have them working for us. So. As we write an equation to relate the lengths, we see that the two small pieces combined give us the larger one. So we know that 25 plus the x is equal to 27.25. To undo addition, we use subtraction. So we'll go ahead and subtract 25 from both sides of this equation. Of course, when we do this, the left-hand side becomes a big fat zero. 25 minus 25 just kind of goes away and becomes zero. So that on the left hand side, all we are left with is x. On the right hand side, we just do the subtraction. And of course, the result is 2.25, but we're not quite done yet. The real question is 2.25 what? And so um, it's always a good idea to write your answer as a sentence, or at least think it as a sentence. There are 2.25. See, if we stop there, it would sound really silly. That's just about as silly as saying x is equal to 2.25 when somebody answers, asks you what the clearance between the refrigerator and the wall is. So there are 2.25. Look back at our units and see that what we need are inches of clearance. And if you really want to be thorough about it, then you might say that there are 2.25 inches of clearance between the refrigerator and the wall. But um, there we go. So let's try another one here. Our example number two, we have an L-shaped figure, and our job is to determine the unknown measurement. So the first thing we want to do is highlight all of these 
lengths that we actually know. And we see that these are all horizontal lengths. So we're just focusing in on the horizontals. 386 is the distance from left to right. 114 goes from the left to somewhere in the middle. And then x starts again at the same spot, just a little lower, from somewhere in the middle over to the right-hand side. So if we could move these around, the picture might become a little bit more clear, and we see that the 386 inches is being divided up into two pieces. The yellow one is 114 inches, the green one is the unknown, and of course the total is 386. So our equation becomes 114 plus the x is equal to 386. Take a second. I know you can solve this. Practice using good format and then come back to the recording when you're done to check your answer. Okay, so the first thing that we do is subtract 114 from both sides of our equation. Our goal is to undo that addition, and of course we undo addition with subtraction. So on the left-hand side, 114 minus 114 leaves us with an x. And on the right-hand side, we just subtract. Did you do the subtraction without a calculator? I bet you could. I bet you could have done it just as quickly. 6 minus 4 is 2, 8 minus 1 is 7, and 3 minus 1 is 2. So our answer, x is equal to 272, isn't quite complete. We want to look back at the problem, and we see that the units we need are inches. All right, let's look at one more. Here we have some missing measurements, but this time they are all vertical. Y is the distance from the top all the way down to the bottom. 21.7 goes from the top to somewhere in the middle, and then the 36.2 picks up from somewhere in the middle down to the bottom, even though that segment is shifted a little bit to the right. Like we did before, if we were to highlight them and then move them so that they were all together, it might be a little bit easier to see. 21.7 for the yellow one, 36.2 for the green, and of course the y is the orange. So now our equation looks like y being equal to 21.7 plus 36.2. And there's nothing to solve for. y is already by itself on one side of the equation. All we have to do is a little addition. So when we add these up, we find out that y is worth, let's see, 7 plus 2 is 9, 6 plus 1 is 7, get our decimal point in there, and 2 plus 3 is 5. 57.9, uh, we need some units. Look back over at our diagram and see that this time we are working in centimeters. Okay, let's shift on to a different topic and talk about perimeter for a second. Perimeter is the distance around the outside of a figure. If our figure happens to have straight sides, then perimeter is the sum which means we need to add of all the side lengths. So we're going to go around the outside of the figure. So here in example four, when we're looking at this triangle, it's not really a triangle. This is a representation of the triangular frame of an A-type evaporator coil. And what we want to do is put some weather stripping around this frame so that the air doesn't escape. Now the question as to how much weather stripping is required is not really a question about asking you whether or not you know that you should add up these three numbers or not. The question here is, do you recognize that what you're doing is calculating a perimeter? So as we go around the edge of this triangle, the amount of weather stripping that we need is equal to the triangle's perimeter. On the left side, we need 28.3 inches. On the right side, we need another 28.3 inches. And on the bottom, we need 15.8 inches. And so we add all of those up and find out that we need 72.4 
and of course these are inches and just to be really clear about it these are inches of weather stripping okay let's move on to our last example and give you a chance to try something so here we have an interestingly shaped figure and it's our job to determine the missing lengths and the perimeter so the first thing we want to do is decide do we want to tackle the horizontal distances first or the vertical distances first I'm kind of partial to the horizontal ones okay so it's your job now to make a figure or I guess I should say to adapt this figure we know from left to right is a total distance of 94 inches the question is how is that 94 inches broken up so look at your figure and see what small pieces come together to make the full distance from left to right and then come back to the recording all right so let's see on the left hand side we have a piece that's worth 18 inches that's over here so we've gone from left to somewhere in the middle and then the next horizontal piece picks up a little bit lower and that's of size X goes all the way over here to the right hand piece that's sticking up and on the far right we have a horizontal distance of 35 that brings us over to the right hand side edge so the equation that we need is 18 plus X plus 35 but these three small pieces come together to create the whole so your job now is to pause the recording and do the algebra required and the good notation and good format to solve the problem and then come back and see how you did okay so here on the left we have 18 and 35 we add those together and there's 53 and of course we don't forget that the X is still there and bring down the 94 to undo the addition we need some subtraction whatever we do to the left hand side we want to do to the right hand side so on the left 53 minus 53 gives us that 0 again and only X remains and on the right hand side 4 minus 3 is 1 9 minus 5 is 4 so X is worth 41 and those are inches okay so now we're ready to work on the vertical distances or the vertical segments those are the ones of course going up and down your job is to do the same thing create for me a diagram that shows the total distance from the top to the bottom and then how it's split up into smaller pieces and then come back to the recording and see how you did so the total distance from top to bottom that's over here that's our Y that's the unknown but it's chopped up into a couple of pieces we have an 11 inches here coming down and then we have to come through the figure and so that's this measurement here we've got 14 inches going from the middle of the figure to the bottom so the equation that we need is that Y is equal to 11 plus 14 that the two small pieces come together to make the whole and of course here there's nothing to solve we just add y is equal to 25 and of course those are inches all right let's put that information on the diagram hang on there changing colors so y is worth 25 inches x was worth 41 inches and it's our job to figure out the perimeter give this one a try on your own see what pieces you would put together and what you come up with and then come back to the recording okay let's see what we've got as we go around the figure I think we're still missing a value on the left hand side the distance from top to bottom is 25 inches and that's the same as the distance from the top to bottom on the right hand side so hopefully you all put a 25 here as well 
So as we go around, let's start down here on the corner, like right there. That's going to be our beginning point. So we're going to move around from this corner up is a distance of 25 inches. And then we'll come across the top here for another 18 inches. Come down 11 inches. Move to the right 41 inches. That's our X. Move back up another 11 inches. And then over to the right 35. Come down the right edge, which is 25. And then get the bottom, which is 94. And so really we're just adding all of those up. And when we get done, the answer is 260. And of course, those are 260 inches. When you are reading the written materials for this section, there's a couple of different examples in there. So it's worth a look. And then uh, get started on your homework. See how you do. And we'll be talking. Take care. Bye-bye.